What's up guys, it's your boy Justin with another game review. Today we're reviewing Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, which is a 2022 action JRPG which came up for Nintendo Switch, PS4 and PS5, developed by Tosei, published by Square Enix. This is a remake of the PSP game from 2008, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. Which is a prequel to the legendary PS1 game. Which, holy crap, after playing this game, really, really put me in the mood to play Final Fantasy VII again. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm probably not going to have time, but we'll, who knows, maybe we, we will find a time to play it. So, yeah, it's... Obviously, it's a prequel to Final Fantasy VII, so there's going to be spoilers for Final Fantasy VII. Though, I was honestly really surprised considering if you played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you and they went, they changed the voice actors from the original game to the voice actors that they had in Remake. So, I thought, hey, this game was pretty much going, wasn't just going to be a remake, it was pretty much going to tie into Final Fantasy VII re Remake and how, spoiler alert, they basically created a new timeline only for that to not really happen. And I actually rewatched a Let's Play because I didn't have time to replay Final Fantasy VII Remake again. I, wa I watched DSP's, re uh, DSP's Let's Play of Remake and I have more questions <laughs> now than ever. Because like holy crap some stuff does not make sense. But yeah, let's get into what the store, what this game's about. So this game is, like I said, it's a prequel to Final Fantasy VII. It starts off a couple years before the events of Final Fantasy VII. I think it's like four or five years. And you play as, as Sack Flair, who is the dead boyfriend of Aerith. From Final Fantasy 7. Even though they weren't exactly dating. They were basically dating. Right. Which. Uh, let's put this here. Because I, I like. Honestly. I like the original cover. Better. Than the new cover. Honestly. Uh, though. They still have Tetsuo Nomura. Listed as the. Uh, director of this game. Which I. I, I highly doubt that. So. The. The game's about Zack Flair, who is a member of Soldier, which is elite fighting force for the Syndra, Syndra, sorry, Syndra uh, Corporation, who, ru who basically runs Midgar, which is a f f floating futuristic city in like, this cyberpunk fantasy <laughs> world, where Sol Soldier is the elite fighting force, and you play as... As second class Sack Flair, who is the apprentice of Angeal, who is a first class soldier, who is the original owner of the iconic Buster Sword. Which do they have Angeal? You can see Angeal right here, actually. And the, the game takes place during the war with Shinra and Wutai where Shinra is invading Wutai on a pretense of, hey, uh, we want to make Mako factories, power plants, to enrich the lives of people from Wutai. But the Wutai government is getting in our way, so we have to take them out. <laughs> oh my god, which you get to see a young Yuffie. Yeah, uh, during during one of the early missions. So yeah, the game takes place during the early the the years of like Zack Flair be uh before he gets the Buster Sword until he inherits the Buster Sword uh from his mentor Angeal who him and another first cl class soldier Genesis, who are best friends with um, Sephiroth, split from the corporation for 
uh, unknown unknown reasons. Obviously, you find out while you play the game, and Zach gets promoted and has to deal with the has to deal with the uh, has to deal with conflicted emotions. Does does he does he uh, betray Shinra and help his friends, or or do does he ha does he keep following Shinra and and fight fight his mentor mentor right only for certain secrets to be revealed this game had a lot of Metal Gear Solid vibes it did back then and it even still has Metal Gear Solid vibes today man you even have like a sniping mission and like a sneaking mission <laughs> sneaking mission segments in this game. So the gameplay for this game is like a, a hack and slash basically where you can kind of run around on small maps fighting enemies which are kind of which will just pop up on screen where your character f fights them. This is a action this is an action spin-off JRPG before the remakes where they turn where they turn the games into action RPGs, man. What the hell? Well, T Tetsuo, sorry, Tetsuo Nomura always had a thing for action RPGs. Like what the first game he developed with the bouncer, I think he he was the director on that. I'm not sure. It was an action RPG. So the guy has always had a thing for action RPGs, man. Uh, so it's a hack and slash. You can, there's customization where you can uh, where you can change your loadouts to whether or not you want to have like. More offensive loadout, a magic base, or defense. Which you can even have the... There's even options where you can have the the game set your materia for you. Which you can also craft materia in the game. Uh, besides from going, uh, playing the story mode and going on the missions, you can also go... There are also side quests in the game. And missions that you can do to get equipment, material, or even summons. There are summons in the game. Which have like, unlike with Remake where they fall alongside you. They're basically really cool cinematic cutscenes. Which you have this thing called the Digital Mind Visualizer. Where it turns into like, into, what what are those? Uh, like a Pachinko machine where you have... Where you have like character, you, where you have portraits of characters that spin in a roulette, and depending on who, like, who, what character shows up, you can you can uh, you can uh, pull off a special attack or ability. Like Arif heals you. Sung from the Turks uh, does this helicopter attack, and Jill, you can do this rush attack. Uh, this rush like attack where like Zack will pummel the enemy with his bare fist. You have the apocalypse attack was really badass. You have the Sephiroth attack where he where it's the Octo Slash, and then like you have the Cloud attack, who uh, shoots like a beam from the from his sword, right? Which was all really cool, really cool cin cinematic attacks in this game. Uh, though, man, I. For the people who are like, are there cameos from people from, from Final Fantasy VII? You have cameos from Yuffie, Tifa, Tifa, and Cloud. Cloud shows up around Chapter Four, where he shows up as a Shinra trooper. Which I always thought, hey, when I when I first played the game back when I was a teenager, I played I played this game when I was what, what like fifteen at the time. I can't remember. Um, and I was like, when the hell is Z uh, Cloud going to be, be uh, become a member of Soldier? Because like he, when he show when he shows up, he's just like a Shinja trooper. Spoiler alert: He never becomes a soldier. He lied the entire time about being a soldier, which I thought, which was obvious. Which was always obvious, but I thought he was lying about being soldier first class. I didn't know he was just lying that he was a soldier to, to begin with. What the hell? Like, you had Zack as a mentor, you never 
got promoted to like promoted to like um soldier man like holy shit jesus christ which i never beat the original game and this copy doesn't work unfortunately i might try to get it fixed though i got stuck at the sephiroth boss battle which happens in chapter 8. There's 11 chapters in this game. I forgot to mention this game took me like 16 hours to beat. You can, How long to beat has it listed at 12 hours. And I was like level 35. At a game where you can... You, the max level is 99. Holy shit man. Who? <laughs> 99. Oh my god. Oh my god. I could... I could 90, who's going to keep playing the game at that point? Because, like, honestly, as much as I'm talking about, like, oh, this game is great, you know. The game has some pretty obvious problems. One, the game, graphics-wise, looks like shit. Like, when I first want, went to the GameStop to buy a copy of this game, they told me they only had the Nintendo Switch and PS5 copy. That there was no, the game never came out for PS4, which was a complete lie. And the, the reason they gave, the guy gave me was like, oh yeah, it's too powerful. I can't run on PS4. Motherfucker! The Nintendo Switch is obviously a lot weaker than the, than the PS4. Like, do, did Final Fantasy VII Remake ever came out for Nintendo Switch? I don't think so. Which, how pissed off are Nintendo Switch fans? Like, hey, we got, we, we got, Reunion, but we're not getting like any of the other Final Fantasy 7 games. Those are those are all like um, th Those are all um, PlayStation exclusives like what the fuck? Oh My god, I can't I couldn't believe that that that, that bold-faced lie like oh my god Yeah, the gra graphics wise the game kind of looks like crap. There's not a lot of exploration in this game you can explore a little bit of like Shindra, like a small section of like uh, the city, like the part of the city outside of the Shindra main, Shindra main building. And you can like visit the slums and that's pretty much it. Outside of random areas where you go on missions at, like empty fields, caverns, stuff like that. Though there's a, one point in the game where you go to Nibelheim. Sorry, is it Nibelheim? What, whatever like town Cloud is from, which is like holy shit. That was chapter eight is probably the best point in the game because that's when it goes into last mission territory. If you ever saw that OVA, which is like holy shit, that was a badass like chapter, man. Oh my god. But the game peaked at that point. It kind of goes downhill from that. Even though there was a cool ending. With really good music. Holy. Some of the fucking tracks in this fucking game. Reminded me of Silent. Like Akira. Akira Liyamoka. Like, like Silent Hill. The Silent Hill guy. Like some of the tracks reminded me of that. I'm like holy shit. That was god godlike guitar solos man. Holy fuck. But yeah, like, aside from the bad graphics and the lack of exploration, you have NPCs in this game that not only do a lot of them all look alike, but holy shit, the, some of them were straight up nightmare fuel. There, there's like a side quest into the game where this little girl asks you to go find her uncle who went out with the, the men to fight off the monsters, right? And the little girl, I swear to God, I actually took a sneak screenshot of this, but it's on my Switch. Where the little girl has like a has an adult male's head on her body, but they put pigtails, like black pigtails on it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck? Was that a troll? Like, holy shit, man. And then you find out who her uncle was, and it's Don Corneo. And it's obviously she, he wasn't her real uncle, and she he invited her to live at his like mansion or whatever. And I'm like, this is like a little girl, by the way. What the fuck? Are you serious? What the fuck was that shit? Holy shit, man! So I have no idea what the fuck. Like, who pa who passed on that? Like, that was fucking crazy. 
Oh my god. And there was there's some very cringe and terrible dialogue in this game, by the way. It was like people bitch and complain about the dialogue in the old like um you know PS1 Super Nintendo. Those had charm and that was back when like games had like local like localization budgets were probably a lot smaller or whatever. These are like triple considered triple A games. What are the excuse for the bad fucking dialogue in these games? Like holy shit, man. Uh, fucking really terrible dialogue. And the voice acting, like come on, Zach Zach's new voice actor sounds to me sounds way worse than the old one in my opinion. Uh, but that, that, that's just what it is. And, like, honestly, like, this, 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 this game was, like, just made me, like, wish I could just go out and play, like, Crisis, the original Crisis Core again. Because even though that game, yeah, the graphics aren't as good, but it was, like, consistent, like, with ev how everybody looked and everything. Here, it's, like, you have some character models that look really good. And, like, others where it was, like, oh, yeah, they look, look terrible. And in Zack's hair, at times where sometimes his bangs are see-through. And other times they're not see-through. It's, like, what the fuck? They, they look worse than, like, PS3, like, hair on, like, you know... Uh, like in the Final Fantasy games of the PS3 and the Xbox 360 era, where it was like all pixelated at the end. And look, the hair in this game looked worse than that. <laughs> oh my Christ, man. But yeah, let's just go, let's just wrap up the review and go with my likes and dislikes. Likes, beautiful cinematics, awesome soundtrack. This game had a lot of Metal Gear Solid vibes, including with the story, obviously. Fun combat. You got side quests, missions, material crafting. Uh, dislikes. Terrible dialogue. Holy crap. Nightmare fuel NPCs, like I said. Incredibly short game for... Yeah, I paid like 65 bucks for this game. You could beat this game like in less than 20 hours. That's kind of bullshit. I, I, I don't give a shit like new games cost like 90 bucks now. That's still... Like the... Sci the secret of... Mo uh, of Mana remake was forty bucks, and come on, that this game does not look that much better than that, honestly. Holy fuck! Uh, games, the game peaked at the Sephiroth boss fight, and also this was like confused the fuck me. Zach, spoiler: Zach dies at the end. So it's like okay, obviously I knew that happened in the original. But I wasn't expecting for that to happen here. Because if you played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know that Zack actually survived in that game. Which I thought that was a flashback or something. Uh, apparently, like, no, apparently they did something in Remake that changed the fate. But, like, what the fuck? If you play this game, you know, like, Cloud was with Zack when he was fighting those Shindra goons. He was just, like, off to, like, you know, he was, like, you know, a little while, he was a little, like, um, I don't know if he was a mile away, but he was, he was, like, you know, he wasn't that too far away. He was just, like, he was suffering from materia poisoning. So he was, like, like, half unconscious or something. So it's, like, where the fuck was, like, uh, like... Where the fuck was Cloud in Remake when, like, Zack was fighting those Shindra goons? Because in this game, he was not that far away. He actually wakes up and stumbles onto, like, you know, a half-dead Zack. And Zack gives him the Buster Sword. And, like, you know, Cloud decides to, you know, basically usurp, usurp his identity. He starts calling himself, like, Shindra First Class Soldier or whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Which is like, what the fuck? And then the game, like, and by the way, there was, like, uh, a 10-minute, like, credit scene only for, like, the post-credit scene just to be, like, the first, like, the intro to Final Fantasy VII Remake for a game that came out after Remake. Wouldn't it have made more sense to, to, for this game to come out before Remake? Like, what the fuck? So, I don't know what the fuck is going on with this game, man. Because I, the main reason I bought this game was so okay because you know they like 
Cloud, like Zack is supposed to be alive in these new Final Fantasy games. He's actually right here in Rebirth. He's a playable character in Rebirth. I guess he joins the party. I still haven't replayed. I still haven't played Rebirth. I'm gonna play it. Uh, I'm gonna start playing it in June. Cause I feel like oh, that's more of a summer game. So, yeah. Which when this review comes out, it's going to be what uh, June? I don't know. I might I might post this review like you know two weeks early. So yeah, uh, my final rating for this game is a six out of ten. Buy it when you can get for cheap. It's not worth full, not worth full price. Uh, and honestly, I would just play get the original because the original you can I keep seeing it for twenty bucks. Where I was gonna get this copy fixed because like the DMD is all scratched up, but I might just say fucking just buy a new copy. Because it's only 20 bucks, man. That's worth it. Uh, to play the original over this game. Holy fuck, man. But yeah, if you can't get... If you don't have a PSP... And you want to play this game... Yeah, I would say check... Get Wait till you can get for cheap. Otherwise, yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's it for this review, guys. Our next review is God Knows What... Um, I might be Saga Frontier Remastered. I was going to review. Uh, I was going to play um, Loop Eight Summer Wars or whatever the fuck that game's called. Summer of the Gods, sorry. Uh, but we might be playing Alien Chronicles before we play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Actually, we might be playing the original Final Fantasy VII Remastered. So who the fuck knows? Uh, I hope this review was good. Peace out. Bye.